everybody, this is Tim with Rock Essentials with Tim, and welcome to the show. You know, if I had to pick a holiday that was my favorite, I'd probably pick Halloween. And I don't know if it's because of the costumes or the candy, or maybe it's the ghost. So grab onto your favorite talisman, because we're going to visit the 10 most musically haunted places in Laurel Canyon in Los Angeles. Let's check it out. So this is Laurel Canyon Boulevard, and I'm standing in front of the Harry Houdini estate. This was built in 1915 by a man named Ralph Walker, and there's actually a bit of controversy that goes along with it because Harry Houdini never actually owned this estate. He actually lived across the street there up on that bluff in what used to be the guest house. It was destroyed by fire years and years ago. But um, the house here did have a deep water tank that Houdini would use to practice his harrowing underwater escapes. And there are many caves and caverns on these properties, some that run under Laurel Canyon to the uh, estates across the street. And it's rumored that Houdini kept a locked trunk full of his trade secrets in one of them. It's never been found, but you know, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Uh, but let's check out some of the stuff on the other side of the street where some of these tunnels under Laurel Canyon go to. So the Houdini guest house would have been up here on the hill, right next door to this property. And this used to be the log cabin. And uh, it was once owned by Tom Mix, but later on and more famously by Frank Zappa. Zappa lived here for less than a year in 1968, but it was so renowned for its parties and get togethers here that I think his name is mostly connected with it. And it's probably the most renowned place in all of Laurel Canyon. Now that being said, this place burnt down in 1981 55 years to the day of Harry Houdini's death, which occurred on October 31st, Halloween. Sketty. Since 1929, the Chateau Marmont has been home away from home to virtually every movie star or rock star ever. It was a place where their private and often lascivious goings on were comfortably outside the public lens. When in town, comedian and musician John Belushi would stay here, and in March of 1982, he famously OD'd and died in Bungalow No. 3, and it's said he still haunts it. Skeptic and former U.S. Senator Al Franken stayed in Bungalow 3 just a week or so after Belushi's passing, and he awoke one night to what he claims was John standing next to the bed. Franken called out, but the apparition was gone before he could get his glasses on for a better look. There have been other occasions, and one in particular that occurred in 1999, when a young family was staying in Bungalow 3, and their two-year-old son woke them several times during the night by talking and laughing. When they asked who he was talking to, the boy replied, the funny man. Sometime later, when his mother was showing him a magazine with a picture of Belushi in it, the young boy pointed at it and said, it's the funny man. So now we find ourselves back in Laurel Canyon at this house that used to be owned by none other than Carol King. And later it was bought by Courtney Cox. So before Courtney moved in, she bumped into Carol King and Carol said, did you know about the ghost? And Courtney was like, yeah, whatever. So as time wore on, guests of Courtney would complain to her about a uh, apparition, a woman sitting at the edge of their bed. Courtney was pretty nonplussed by the whole thing until one day when a UPS driver knocked at the door, she answered and he said, did you know the house was haunted? And she said, well, why would you say that? And he said, because there's a ghost standing right behind you. That was pretty much it for her. She put it on the market and uh, never stayed here alone again. Anyways, the Carol King, Courtney Cox house. One of the most famous locations in all of Laurel Canyon would have to be the former home of Mama Cass Elliot. She hosted parties and impromptu jams that featured everyone from Clapton to Joni Mitchell. It's even said that this is where Crosby, Stills, and Nash sang together for the first time. But there is another side to this house. Mama Cass died in London in 1974, and the house has changed hands on several occasions most famously to the likes of Ringo Starr, Beverly D'Angelo, and Dan Aykroyd. 
Dan and his wife Donna Dixon lived here for years and on numerous occasions witnessed jewelry moving by itself on a dresser and things turning off and on. No big deal as far as Dan Aykroyd was concerned. Growing up, he was used to it. His father even wrote a book called History of Ghosts. So one night when Dan got home after a long shoot, he crawled into bed and something crawled in after him. He felt a shape, a depression in the bed, and a weight next to him. Dan has been quoted as saying, I'm sure it was Mama Cass, it was a big ghost. Uh, the next owner, Beverly D'Angelo, also saw jewelry moving by itself and would hear music and was convinced it was Mama Cass, whom she thought of as a benevolent ghost. And finally, English singer Robbie Williams once rented the house and claimed to regularly feel her presence. Ringo Starr's son, Zach Starkey, who lived there briefly as a child, once rang Robbie up and said, I heard you moved into the house. Have you met the kids yet? We used to play with them when we were little. So back in 1980, Germs lead singer Darby Crash lived in Unit 110 of this building with a few friends. And a little backstory on the Germs. Back in 77, when punk rock was new in LA, there were a few bands like X, the Weirdos, the Screamers, that were really making a name for themselves. But I think the real bona fide rock star in this whole scene was Darby Crash. And I had the good fortune to see him play, and he was nothing if not mesmerizing. You could not take your eyes off. But Darby Crash was a deeply troubled soul, and at just 22 years old, uh, he died from what was termed an intentional heroin overdose. The death of the crown prince of punk rock went largely under the radar because less than 24 hours later, John Lennon was killed in New York City. According to his roommates, a couple of days later, they started noticing things being in different places and lights going on and off. And finally, the apartment manager asked one of them if Darby was feeling okay because he had seen him earlier that day walking down the hallway and Darby would not turn around when he called after him. And according to witnesses, this happened three days after he had died. This beautiful estate in the Country Club Park section of Los Angeles was built in 1902 and originally known as the Rosenheim Mansion. It once served as a Catholic nunnery, but more recently it was a prime filming location for season one of American Horror Story, which was a pretty gruesome show to say the least, and it earned it the new nickname for which it is now known, The Murder House. Among other anomalies, the recent owners claim to have seen a butler walking up the stairs, which is the same apparition that had been witnessed years before by a previous owner. An old nun has been seen in a rocking chair and in what I'm sure is the creepiest basement in LA, guests have felt a presence physically touch them and then disappear. Anyways, the murder house. Our next stop is here at the Lido Apartments and in its heyday in the 40s and 50s, this was the place to stay for traveling productions coming through Hollywood like Hello Dolly or The Ice Capades. But by the 70s, it was the place to stay if you were hiding out from the law. It was the very definition of the seedy side of Hollywood. Now, what a lot of people don't realize, including me before researching, is that Hotel California's front cover and then the back cover are two totally different places. And it literally couldn't be more true. One is the very corner of California austerity at the Beverly Hills Hotel in Beverly Hills. And the other here on Yucca Street is the genuine manifestation of the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. If the inspiration for Hotel California was a movie, then this place would be the movie Psycho. So here we are in the uh, lobby. So here we are in the lobby of the Lido where the famous uh, uh, inside cover back of Hotel California was made. It's one of those photos you can look at for, for hours and pick out different stuff, kind of like Sergeant Pepper's, but there was a, a shadowy figure up in one of those archways and no one knows who it is. And photographer David Alexander said he didn't know who it was. And this place was the site of a murder and several suicides over, over the years. So a lot of people say it's haunted. All right, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. So what do you say, let's go.
If you stroll down Carroll Avenue in the Angelino Heights section near Echo Park, you'll see the most beautifully restored Victorian houses in all of Los Angeles, except for one, and it's arguably the most famous on the street. In 1983, this was the location for Michael Jackson's epic video, Thriller. It has been hailed as the greatest video ever made, and at the time was certainly the most expensive. The house still looks much the same as it did then. It doesn't appear as though anyone has lived here in a very long time, and if it isn't haunted, then maybe it should be. It's part of what makes this neighborhood one of the most popular destinations in LA for Halloween trick-or-treating, and it isn't hard to see why. So we're on our way to our next stop. We're in Hollywood on Franklin Avenue, and we're passing right by this place, so I thought I'd point it out. Uh, this is the Highland Gardens Motel, or hotel. It used to be called the Landmark, and this was where, in 1970, Janis Joplin spent her last night. She was recording her album, Pearl Down the Street, at Sunset Sound, and she OD'd and died in room 105. So let's check it out real quickly right here. Room 105 has become somewhat of a shrine where guests leave like pictures and boas and, and cigarettes and sometimes wake up the next day to find half empty bottles of Southern Comfort laying open in the original closet. Reportedly, there's some pretty strange goings on in room 105, but you can find out for yourself by staying in the room. It's still available if you dare, right here. Back again on Laurel Canyon Boulevard is the mansion, and until recently this 10-bedroom villa was owned by producer Rick Rubin, who made a private recording studio out of it. From Johnny Cash to Slayer, even Neil Diamond, just about everybody has laid down tracks here. There have been many reports of odd goings-on, but none more notable than when the Red Hot Chili Peppers were here in 1991, recording their breakout album Blood Sugar Sex Magic. For months on end, most of the band lived here in the mansion while recording and would notice things like unusually cold or hot rooms and disembodied voices. Often a woman, and on more than one occasion when she was feeling a mite frisky. Others have reported seeing a white clad woman in a flowing dress and strange orb-like anomalies have shown up in some of the many photo shoots that have occurred here. You know, I've noticed that when a songwriter is asked, where do you get your ideas from? They'll often answer, well, they're just out there in the ether. I just channel them and put it down on tape. So perhaps it's just easier for those kind of people to get in tune with another dimension. Anyways, that's our 10 most haunted musical locations in Los Angeles and Laurel Canyon. And by the way, if you like classic rock, we've got a lot of great vids in our library that I think you'll probably be interested in. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would shamelessly ask you for your subscription now. For Tim, I'd like to thank you. Keep playing it and keep playing it loud. Peace out. Bye-bye.